Howdy, here's Bonnie with a quick edge. I started podcast recording. What I missed from the beginning was a platform that allowed me to record my interviews with my guests in a way that gives me complete overview over the entire situation, over the audio quality, video quality, internet connection. And exactly after three years of podcasting, I finally found my platform to record on. It's called Sandcaster. It's so easy to record a podcast on Sandcaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with a few guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layer backups and show you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. All you have to do is go to Zencaster.com slash pricing, that's spelled Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R dot com slash pricing and use my code Bonnie's Legends, that's B-O-N-N-I-E-S-L-E-G-E-N-D-S and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster pay plan. I want you to have the same easy experience as I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. You're listening to the music feature of the podcast, which is called A Pretty New Music. And I interview every Saturday, I interview an artist about the new single release. And in this conversation you're about to listen to, I interviewed Izzy Allen from Barrera about their new single, Secretly Place. Funny enough, when I interviewed her, they released a surprise single the next following week, um, which is called I Am Not Your Girl which is so good too. You should definitely listen to I'm Not Your Girl and Secretly Place and Peach Trees, which was also a single they released before Secretly Place. Anyway, you should listen to the music. If you if you don't listen to the music, you you miss out otherwise. Anyway, we talk about the song, we talk about Secretly Place, we talk about how it was made. I interviewed Barrera actually three years ago. <laughs> Three years ago, about can't help, I think, but mostly about how they found each other, how they founded their band, and um, yeah, about their dreams, kind of in a way. It's really, it's, it's time, it's a time travel if you listen to the episode. Um, it's on this podcast, so check that out if you want to listen to more of Barrera. And there are actually all the bandmates in there. So in this episode, you're about to listen to It's Just Easy. But she's crazy too. I also have an episode with hair on the podcast. Anyway, that's a good episode too. <laughs> this episode you're listening to right now, it's it's Izzy Ellen from Barrera. We talk about Secretly Place. I really loved to see that growth and I'm really proud of them. And yeah, have a nice listen. So we have Izzy Ellen here. Hello. Hello. It's just me in this room, but like, anyway, we have Izzy Ellen here. <laughs> um, Hello. This is this is your third time on the podcast. <laughs> I know, exciting times. Yeah, yeah. So the first time you were there with the entire crew, which was a very chaotic oh, yeah. experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, they're they're in the other room right now. Um, 
working on the set list for our London game. Oh yeah, I was. I saw that and was like, why did you have like two weeks before I go to London? <laughs> you do a game. Yeah. I was like so annoyed. I was like, why didn't I time this correctly? Yeah, yeah and then you like once came. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> as yourself, I wanted to say that sounds so weird, but you came like solo, and uh, now you're here again. So. Yeah, I remember last time we talked about clothes. That was quite yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were like, you were also like suing something. Or like you needed something while... Oh, was that the clown? You... Was that that long ago? Did I knit the clown? I think so. Because <laughs> I, I literally, I keep finding it because I finished knitting it and it's so scary. Oh. It literally looks like, oh, I don't know why. Actually, no, I do remember why. It was originally meant to be a hat. And I realized I made it too small and it was a head. And I was like, you know what? This looks clown-like. So I made it. Clown. Okay. Well. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not knitting anything at the moment, though. Sad times. I just remember this very little because you were, like, talking. Oh, yeah. That probably was the clown. Yeah. I was so invested <laughs> it in it. I literally... I mean, once I got the idea that I should make the clown, I was like, I, it was all I did. It took so long. And then once it was done, I was like, this is quite scary, actually. I'm, I don't know. I, yeah, I still I, I still have it somewhere. I used to sit on my shelf, but it, I didn't like it there. Okay. So it went in a box. Yeah, we're totally relatable. <laughs> um yeah. yeah so my my uh bonnie sessions check like the questions i'm asking before i'm be heading straight into why we're here um th those change over the years so you get like a new version of it um but the same the first like the first three questions are still the same what's your name izzy <laughs> when's your birthday august 13th of 2003 and who's your legend? Who is my legend? Gosh, I remember last time you, last time you asked me. I believe, I saw he's on my wall. Who did I did last time? His name is either Cliff or Colin Blundstone. I think it's Colin, Colin Blundstone, the lead singer from the Zombies, and then also, I also Jim Morrison. I think was my last. Okay, no, yeah. I should stop talking about it once before and what. Is now I'd probably say my current legend is either Ozzy Osbourne or um, Robert Plant because I really like their vocal style because even though they're like they're men, a lot of their like vocal range is in my range. So I'm just like I I, I listen to a lot of songs by them and sing them to practice. Nice. And they're pretty. Yeah, big Ozzy fan at the moment too. <laughs> The next two questions of the bonus questions check are different. Um, so what would be, like, if you have to choose a song, what's the theme song for your current life chapter? Oh, a theme song. I don't know. I've been, I've actually been quite busy recently. Normally I'm pretty chill, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Symptom of the universe, I'd say. Because it's like, oh, because that song's like all like hectic at the start mm. and then it chills out. Yeah. I was like, there we go. Um, okay, and the fifth question is, what's a song that just takes your breath away by how good it is every time you listen to it? Oh, I should probably say Symptom of the Universe again. Yeah. Because I've been listening to it a lot and I'm always like, oh, Aussie's vocals are mental. I mean, I'm not... I don't know how, like, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this on your podcast, but obviously he was, he did a lot of bad substances. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so shocked that he managed to still sing like that. I'm like, how? For anyone who hasn't listened to the other episodes or has no idea who you are, maybe introduce yourself. Um, I'm Izzy. I do social media stuff. <laughs> and I'm also in a band. That's pretty much yeah. me and i think i think well, thumbs, thumbs up, up. Thumbs up. <laughs> i think most listeners probably will have seen your room <laughs> oh yeah i know it's Gosh. like such um, a but it's like it's an easy thing right it's like yeah, this isn't even this is this is me at my yeah. house not my parents i literally go back to my parents house to film content but yeah this is the 
the mid version, the one in my uni house. Yeah. Which, it, you know, it's still pretty cool, but it's not as hectic because yeah. um, I'm not allowed to stick too much stuff up. Like, this is all blue tag. All the stuff in my parents' house I've stuck with tape, which when I inevitably, like, have to take it down, um, I can... I'll obviously be able to paint over, but, you yeah. know. Yeah. I get it. Ugh, renting. <laughs> We're here to talk about Sacredly Place, the new single of your band. Ooh. Well, yeah, it's it's new. It's new. It's a month old. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the newest one. I think yeah. it's been out for like a month now, I believe. Okay. Uh, first question. Describe secretly place in three words. Oh my gosh, I literally have something for this. Oh. This is why I always call it... I'm just making sure that it is three words. Okay, I always call it the Teletubby song. <laughs> Teletubby one word? The only reason I call yeah, it that no. is because it, like, it kind of gives me Teletubby vibes. Like, oh, okay, now I see it. Now I see it. Yeah, I, I, I always call it the Teletubby song, which is like, I feel like if someone listens to it, they will not get that same vibe, but I get that vibe. <laughs> Probably the next time I listen to it, I will think of this. <laughs> Be like, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, you know, the squad dancing along. But... I see it. I see it. The Teletubby song. Okay. Um, does the title have a special meaning? How did you come up with it? Um, secretly, oh, secretly plays. Well, is you know the lyric secretly yeah. plays in the song, but secretly plays itself is inspired by the song "See Emily Play" by um, Pink Floyd. Yeah, that's that's the most basic answer. Everyone like it's just yeah. I mean, you do this right. Like when I name my poetry, when I need to give my poem, <laughs> that was so scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the hand just. I heard him coming. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. I'm really sorry. Wait, wait, James, James. Yeah. Um, what does secretly plays mean? Uh, it means a lot of things, I guess. I don't know. A lot of thing and nothing lot of thing. at all. Oh, I said mm. it was inspired by see Emily play. I talk to the wind. Was the oh, place. and yeah, yeah. and I talk to the wind by King, King Crimson. Crimson. Yeah. About that, yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I listened to him coming and I was like, Wait, when is this gonna happen? <laughs> yeah. Bye, no, I like saw the hand, you know, like the door open. <laughs> it's just the hand. I was like, That's fucking scary. <laughs> I was like waiting for him to come in and then be like, Oh, sorry, and then yeah, all good, all good, all good. Um, I, yeah, so yeah, the next question would have been like, What inspired the track, but like, also, what is this song about? Um, I guess it's like about a gal who um plays music when she's sad. I think. Oh, I think. nice! I should know. Like, I wrote. I actually wrote. Me and James were in the studio writing this song, and we wrote this song. I can't remember his last name, but his name's Richard, and he's the producer for the Blossoms. So that was um he yeah I th actually to be fair um. Yeah, I he give gave me like little hints of things to do and what have you, um, but um, yeah, the lyrics I mainly wrote, but I honestly just tried to make them sound all psychedelicy, so the meaning's quite loose. Yeah, I I did not think about a girl who's like listening to like I did not. I get, it's like secretly plays. She saves it for a rainy day. Which, oh, you know, it's like okay, yeah. Now I get it. Uh, maybe I didn't yeah. pay that much attention to the. Uh, I, no, I I don't pay attention to the lyrics when I read them. So yeah, and the the music is quite yeah. like fun. Like it's you know yeah yeah it's quite um, yeah well it was kind of like um it was we probably won't do something as um quintessentially psychedelic as that again we would incorporate psychedel psychedelia into a more heavy content yeah we would incorporate psychedelia in like more of a heavier song like um because i've i i think after writing secretly plays i just um yeah it was fun but it also um interest this is not really a fun fact but fun fact um it is our worst performing song well yeah. probably because it's like the the latest one like yeah or well, like like from the first so like or did you like compare it from like uh like um it's a month old now and did the other songs perform more well in the first month yeah, oh okay okay yeah yeah but i mean um i mean it gives, it gives a good insight on what 
um, music our audience wants to be seeing. So, and interestingly enough, when we released Secretly Plays, Secretly Plays didn't do that great, but it gave a boost on Peach Trees, which was really odd. Yeah. Um, so people were like, people went over to listen to Secretly Plays and was like, oh, let's listen to Peach Trees instead today. I was. I actually, I uh, actually like this. Uh, I like Secret of Place. I think it's quite cool as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew it wouldn't be our strongest, but I, I thought, I, I kind of thought it would do better. But hey ho, it's, it's one of the parts of music. Like it fits, you like your music so well. <laughs> so that's like really interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Like Barrera fans, let us know why you're not listening to Secretly Place. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe we could. Um, Oh, wait, actually, yeah, sure, why not? Um, yeah, well, we're, well, we are going to release another track soon. Oh, okay. Shh. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this, or probably this, if I'll get people to listen to the podcast, and whoever listens to the podcast will hear me say this because I haven't, I'm, I'm not going to announce it for a while. But yeah, we're releasing another track, which is a bit more similar to Peachtree's, but it's not blues rock. But it's kind of like, I would say Peach Trees is like um, modern interpretation of like Led Zeppelin or things like mm. that. But the next one we're releasing, I would say, is more of a modern interpretation of The Doors. Because oh. um, there's an organ sound in that as well, but it's not as, um, I would say, jarring as and Secretly Plays. And um, our label keeps saying that the, ne- the one that we're going to release is like, oh, the strongest one that we've done yet and all this, so exciting well we also recorded some demos up in liverpool recently for just because we wrote some songs and we wanted to get them down so maybe yeah. maybe those will be released and maybe hopefully they'll they'll do better than see i still i'm still like mad salty about it though because i i feel like i did a fair amount of promotion for it yeah but yeah i think it's more so just that um i guess um yeah it's not our audience's cup of tea but that's that's all right We'll do more heavier stuff. It's okay. Well, I stay. I stay a true lover to secretly place. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, what did the process of making secretly place look like, and how long did it take? Um, well, we rec- we wrote it and recorded it in a day. Um, so we went up. Me and James went up to Liverpool, and the label set up. Uh, writing sesh with Richard and he was like oh so what because literally the day before we'd r- written peach trees we were up there for a couple of days and oh, wow. um, we had two days of writing session um so it's like okay we've done something heavier what what else are the vibes so I literally was like oh I'd love to do a song like I talked the wind by King Crimson like what James said and James doesn't like that oh. song but we went along with it anyway um and yeah and then we started fiddling on the organ and then I just wrote a bunch of lyrics. Actually the lyrics on the song now aren't the same as when I wrote them then. I kind of adjusted them a bit when we were, um, we went up to London afterwards to properly record some stuff because um, with me and James there, obviously Tom and Plateau, our drummer and guitarist wouldn't be on the recording. So we re-recorded some bits and then I changed the lyrics because I, I feel like, um, you know the song Rocky Raccoon by the Beatles? I think so. I think I've listened to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like about this bloke who gets mad about a Bible or something. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to get like, butchered for saying that. Well, I, yeah, I butchered that so bad. But um, I think, yeah, it, the lyrics were kind of inspired by that. Okay. Um, and I kind of just thought it was a bit too complex, so I eased it down a bit. I remember like you put a like sabotage and then you announced like your second album and that was like pretty like oh wow like <laughs> it was like no but we were like so used in today's and the music industry to see like a bunch of singles and then like an album so that was like really like I don't know for me it was like really like oh wow you're really doing like in an old-fashioned way <laughs> you know you put like one single yeah. out and then you announced the album um yeah, I mean, we're doing um, more singles now, yeah. but yeah, the albums are quite a lot of work. And well, when we were doing the albums by ourselves, um, it was a bit more unprofessional. But now with the label, obviously, it's going to be a bit more um, time consuming and this, that, and the other because we want it nice and crisp. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I was wondering if like peach trees and uh, secretive place are going anywhere together, <laughs> or if they're still like um, maybe. maybe okay <laughs> maybe. maybe no, because uh, my original <laughs> mind was just like thinking because the way our work is quite you know matching anyway. <laughs> But maybe it's also just like because it's like this, around the same time, like you put it out, like it's like one era. I see it as one era. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah okay. Um, yeah. Um, what's your favorite? You wrote the lyrics, right? You. Yeah, I write all the lyrics because I feel like the boys are a bit shy about the lyrics. Yeah. I mean, apart from apart from actually, James helped me write the lyrics for Sabotage, but that's it. Okay. Um, do you like want to shout out uh, who played anything else <laughs> in this song? Is, do you want to like shout out the rest of the band, what they did, and like what instruments they played? And yeah, so me and James are the primary songwriters. So um, yeah, we write songs as as I just said. <laughs> um, but um, so yeah, we wrote the base of the song, and then basically we presented it to Plateau and Tom. They added the as I call the sprinkles. <laughs> Because you know, it, like elevates it. A bit. Yeah. They added their sprinkles okay. to the song. Um, so yeah, uh, James actually wrote. Well, actually, I think it was James and Richard our pro- help you produce a man. They like uh, worked on the riff together. Um, and then yeah, Tom. I actually I don't know if Tom changed that much about peach trees. He normally does, but I think he was quite liked it. So he's just you know don't like fix what ain't broke. Also, maybe about the trumps, because he had, like, I mean, you know, like, Tom Tom 2. <laughs> Tom 2 is, like, still the drummer of Burra, but he had, like... Well, yeah, he, had, he like, was in Belgium. Yeah, but he had, like, also, a, like, a different drummer for, like, gigs and stuff, so I was wondering who, like, played the oh, trumps what, on Secret Good Place. Rupert, yeah, no, Ru- Rupert's not, a, like, Rupert um, s- stopped doing band work altogether. He now does, like, music business. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was good yeah. update. <laughs> yes, yeah, so now, now we just ship Plateau out for all our gigs, and we normally only accept bigger gigs. Like we're doing the headline show in yeah. London, but we probably won't do one for a while. Okay, yeah. I saw you have a music video out to it, and also Peach oh. Trees has a music video. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peach Trees has one. Um, yeah, the Secretly plays music video. Yeah. yeah, I actually quite like the music video, I liked the outfit I wore for it. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like the style the music video was done. Like it was very like it was very simple. It was like not I don't know, I like a good music video where you like see the musicians of the band like playing. I like that. Um Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we recorded that in G Live, Guildford Live place because um our uni owns like kind of owns it, okay. so we got to rent it out. Okay. Cool. More fun, so. Yeah. <laughs> what what really worked though as a as a promotion thing, you were like, um, Vivo claimed our new music video, like watch it here. And I bought it so much. Oh no, no, no. That that was true. Oh, really? it literally Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. They they made a claim on it. Whoa. They um yeah, so Universal Music. This is basically what Universal Music does. Yeah. Oh. Because they, they are very big powerful yeah, yeah um people um they will basically claim as much music as possible because you can't get in trouble for claiming something mm. so they claimed our songs which means they took take all money we make from it which literally is so little anyway but i just found it so irritating because obviously they know it's not their songs and they've done it to so many other artists yeah. i i literally i remember once i had one of the songs from the first album in the background of one of my TikToks ages ago. Yeah. And I got a notification saying it got claimed <sighs> by Universal Music. And I, that's, it's so yeah. weird. But, but that one I thought was even weirder because all that did was take down the video. They didn't get any money from it. It was, they, I don't know. It's, that's just weird. Large corporations suck everything out of people as they can. It's like, yeah, yeah. I had that. Yeah. I had that the f- my new book out. <laughs> I was like copying because pa- I have this as an ebook, and obviously it's like my own. Like I, it's my own file, right? When I like upload it to the yeah, books yeah. app on Apple, 
on iPhone. So <laughs> on iPhone. And, um, and I just copy and pasted something to like post in my story. And then there was like literally the message of being like, yeah, this could be copyrighted content. And I was like, yeah, by me. Yeah, <laughs> like I got it. Yes. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a weird thing. Um, yeah, it's very silly. But yeah. it's I find it so frustrating. It's like, but- yeah. Hey ho! It's not like I can do much about it, unfortunately. Yeah, but I, I actually thought the f- <laughs> I didn't even think they took like the video down when I like saw the message. I was like, because sometimes they put like the Vivo like s- symbol at the bottom of the video. So I was thinking that I was like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and then I was like looking at it, and it wasn't there. And I was like, huh? Was that just like a trick to get us to watch the video? <laughs> but like yeah i mean now i got it thanks for clarifying yeah 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 no it's all right i i, I was like so mad so t- remember tom basically came storming in me and james's room it was like you would never guess you would never guess what happened and i, I was so salty about it yeah i just when i posted down the story i didn't know if um it was a bit cheeky yeah. because i mean <laughs> Yeah. I I noticed that you that you have a music video out. I didn't I didn't know that before, and I also didn't know that you had like a YouTube account. Oh so yeah, I, yeah. Like, um, it, it subscribed only then because I saw it only then. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, subscribe to the Barrera YouTube's. Yes, go go go. Watch the secretly plays <laughs> music video. It's good. <laughs> my my favorite part in the secretly plays music video is when Tom Tom is always really like camera shy I'll say and when there's the guitar bit which is like brown 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 he's playing that and staring directly into the camera. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> Yeah. Jump scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh God. Yeah, when I saw that too I was like because I like you're the only one who likes like looks straight into the camera and the others are just playing and then there's yeah this is one scene where you're like yeah, it, it's. I, I, it's I, I think it's quite yeah. funny, actually. Even though. it looks like it was yeah. intended to. So, <laughs> yay! Okay, this is my favorite question. If you could send the song, so secretly plays, to any artist or brand, dead or alive, knowing they'd listen to it, who do you, who would it be? Probably Sid Barrett, the person who sang on um, "See Emily Play," because I feel like. Because he also released a lot of, I will call it jarring music. I think he would kind of have a bit of an appreciation for it almost. I, I like to think. Yeah. I like to. Th- well, I, I like to think that as well because obviously he um, got kicked out of Pink Floyd. It, it'd probably be nice to see that even though he wasn't part of that, he had some kind of impact on music still. Any honorable mentions you want to make? Uh, honorable mentions. I will, uh, well, I know I've already talked about him, but I can't believe I forgot his last name. But Rich, our producer, he's so cool, and he he was so helpful. He also recently had a baby, so congrats, <laughs> congrats! I'm becoming a father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was cool. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. Do you think yeah, you will? Yeah. Do you think you will work with him again? Or yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it was really fun. Nice. Good. We we've we've entered the the end of the page. <laughs> oh, this is very fun though. I really like. It sounds really dumb, but I love answer. That was like three voice cracks in one sentence. No, I love answering questions so much. <laughs> like uh, because um, even though like uh, obviously we get a lot of questions on social media, we don't quite get questions as in depth as this. Normally, people are like. Um, Oh, what is the guitar tone? Oh, you know, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Not like not about the song specifically. Well, you know, no, as in you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Was- it's it's just the interview yeah. style. You have like forty minutes time to like actually explain some things. You can't like put yeah, into yeah. It. not even into like a TikTok. Like that's yeah. Like sometimes yeah, TikTok you get like a question and you're like, God, I only have like three minutes and I know of the. Free- and people won't watch the full three minutes yeah, like, it. yeah it's just it's a weird hectic yeah it's a hectic age today so glad we have podcasts um, yeah.